out on the sea Searching for something that really found me I didn't know it, but it drew me to it Soon I was full of its passion in me I'm Italo Lavigna. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish, or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, paint the oceans. Raymarine Electronics. Raymarine, simply superior. This week, I'm on a real adventure. Instead of going out on the salt water on any of the oceans, I am heading north to the wilderness of Canada. To be specific, I'm going to Labrador, which is part of Labrador, Newfoundland on the East Coast. This week, we're boarding a float plane out of Happy Valley, which is in Goose Bay, Labrador, and we are heading about 70 miles into the wilderness to a lodge on a lake that's full of brook trout. Igloo Lake Lodge is in a secluded area that's part of a river system where there's lots of big brook trout. The float plane ride is amazing. When you look out the window, all you see lake upon lake and river and lakes. And believe it or not, all of them have some species of fish, either brook trout or northern pike. So beautiful here. I think it's a peacefulness, and I'm looking at this fish. It is magnificent. The colors on it. You know, brook trout are part of the char family, same as the Arctic char and the lake trout. They're gorgeous. Also the bull trout, Dolly Varden char, that's out in Western North America. Look at how bright those fins are. They have to deal with predators like otters, bald-headed eagles when they're younger, birds that'll predate on them like loons. For them to reach this size is amazing. Okay, we're gonna get it in the net. I'm just gonna guide it in for you. He's, yeah, he's got lots of, lots of energy. What a beautiful fish. Look at how brilliant they are. Can you see the colors? Look at these halos, the vermiculations along the back. Beautiful head, I want to give it a kiss. Let's see if I can get that hook out. You know what, Travis, I'm gonna need your help. If you can just grab it, it's barbless, it should fall right out. That's a beautiful male, he's got a high back. Look at the nice white marks on the fins. I'm gonna extend him out and he's gonna swim away so beautifully, look it. Once you hook a brook trout, they normally don't jump out of the water, they just dogfight and they really scrap on the surface. Because of the single barbless hook policy, you always have to have tension on the line because it's so easy for the fish to throw the hook. Here at Igloo Lake Lodge, they have beautiful nets that almost look like a cradle. So when a fish is landed, it's not in the bottom of a hoop net. It actually lays straight, which means less stress, very easy to handle them, and of course, with a single barbless hook, very easy to release. a good sized fish. It may not be a big trout, but I'll uh, take a nice pike on a fly any day, especially without a wire leader. You know, when you're using a fly rod, you may not get as many fish as using artificial lures and casting, but boy, is it satisfying. Don't break that fly off. 
I only have about 200 left. Yeah, he's uh, nice and wide. You can see why they call them gators. Look at that look. Good net job. Not a gorgeous northern. I know what he was doing here. He was looking for trout to feed on. There, if you move the net out, I'm just gonna put my hand underneath. What a gorgeous animal. I'm gonna try taking my hand away. See if he just slowly swims away so we can see it. Come on, there you go. Didn't splash. Nice head shakes. This fish is coming right at the boat. So I'm just trying to strip in. No way of getting the line into the reel until it starts to go the other way. <sighs> Sometimes they hit so hard. It's funny because you'll be, I was daydreaming and uh, you know, I cast maybe five, six times to the same area. This time, bang. You know, there's a couple of things about the brook trout that fly fishermen especially love. One is their colors. They're just, they gotta be one of the most beautiful trout even though they're really a char. And two, they're ideal to get fly fishing. It's almost a shame, you know, that to use artificial lures for these fish. And here at Igloo Lake Lodge, it's fly fishing only, live release. This is a really nice female. Tons of power. That, she's hooked beautifully. Man, you got a long reach. That's awesome. What a gorgeous fish. You know, if you're, if you're planning a trip to the Lake Lodge, take really good care when you're handling the fish. Try to keep them in the water. The guides do a great job. What a beautiful fish. Can you hold it up one more time so they can see it? It might swim out of your hands and that's okay. Gorgeous. She's got such a thick back. What a beautiful specimen. That would be a fish of a lifetime for any passionate fly fisherman that's looking for a big brook trout. Beautiful. Okay, I'm gonna take the net away. And it's not gonna take long. What a gorgeous fish. Beautiful. Igloo Lake Lodge has a single barbless live release policy. So if you come here, it's to really get a big trophy brook trout. In my case, I'm not really looking for a big fish. I know that it's more than just catching fish. I'm here for the hospitality because most of the people working at Igloo Lake Lodge are from The Rock, which is Newfoundland. And they are very friendly people. They have a great cuisine. They love to laugh. They love to have fun. As a matter of fact, when we're done fishing in the evenings, we'll just get together and we'll start uh, singing and there's music and entertainment. That's what it's all about. After a long day's fishing, you just chill. Look. I wanted to show you some stuff around the lodge here in Labrador. This is called a cloudberry. Um, the locals call it a bake apple. They're actually very good to eat and they grow all over. And over here we have red currants. You can see the shape of these leaves. See all the currants here, here. Look at all the red ones here. I mean, I could spend time here just eating all the berries. I mean, the food is great here at Igloo Lake Lodge, but being able to enjoy the greens and exploring and seeing the wildlife that's here is awesome. It's such a bonus. Nice when you hit right by that grass. You know, when you come to Labrador, the lakes have so many big boulders in them because they're really expansions of river systems or uh, tributaries that eventually go into the Atlantic. Come on, you beauty, this is a big fish. You know, at Igloo Lake Lodge, you can stay in rooms right in the main lodge, or you can stay in their cabins. They have a nice lounge with beautiful fish mounts that show you what you're gonna be catching when you go out. There, I think I've... Yep, almost. Good job. Boy, you did a good job on that fish. Look how long, oh, that flies out of its mouth, perfect. You know what I'd like to do on this fish is take a measurement on it. I know you have a tape measure. I can hold the net while you get it. I'm going to put the rod away. Can you get in there to measure? Just to get a rough measurement. It's almost the length of the bottom, the bottom of the uh, net. 21 inches. 21. What a gorgeous brook trout. 
you know, it's worth, I would fish all week to get a fish like that. Here you can do it in a matter of hours at Igloo Lake Lodge. Okay, I'm gonna suspend the net. Let's see if they can see it nicely. I'll actually use the net to help you. Look at what a gorgeous fish. I'm gonna lower the net and it's gonna disappear. It's giving you the wave. I love those white highlights on the fins. So we're still fishing these. Uh, this one is like a, a rabbit tail. It's not actually a rabbit tail. It's, uh, like, yeah, it is. It's a rabbit strip with a little bit of deer hair. And you can see it's weighted. It's a weighted fly. And uh, it has a really nice action. You can see that that rabbit strip looks so lifelike. And because it's weighted, the head wants to go down. It almost looks like something swimming. Could be a leech, it could be anything. Man, she is so cute. You know, I've seen groundhogs from a distance, but never this close. Here, there's a big piece right here. Yeah, here. You smell my insect repellent? What do you smell? Here. You're a good girl. You like bread like I do, don't you? Yeah. You're a sweetheart. Beautiful fur. You must take care of yourself. We've got a beautiful morning this morning. You can see the nice stream through the trees. We're taking this path. We're gonna explore the stream, but I wanna just show you and tell you about this moss. This is all over here in Labrador because it's so moist. Look at this, this is peat moss. See the way I'm pushing it? It's almost like a carpet. It's a baby. Babies are okay. Nice little brook, I'm gonna wet my hands. Hopefully they won't flap around too much. Back home, that would be called a fry pan brook trout. Here, they have the potential of reaching, I'm gonna say over 10 pounds. I'm gonna release them right over here. Look it, there he goes. This is amazing. Two casts, two trout. Beautiful, nice brook trout. That nice soft mesh, perfect. Beautiful. Okay, let's see if there's some more in there. Come on, stay on. See if I can land this one just by the rocks here. It's a little bigger. You know, we're not getting the big trophies that we were getting out in the lake, but these guys are so much fun and the environment is so beautiful here. I can't imagine having my three weight here and fishing for these guys. Look it, beautiful trout. I wanna keep it in the water. There, there, and come here, wet my hands. Look it, isn't that a beautiful brook trout? I mean, back home where I come from in Ontario, Canada, that would be a really nice brook trout. And you can see that fly. Look at how iridescent it is. Just came out and there it goes. There's so many places to fish here. You know, we're fishing this pool. You could spend all day fishing one pool, but if you look downstream behind me, look it, there's another pool there. Then on the other side of that big rock, there's probably another pool. You, you could spend, you know, days here. Igloo Lake Lodge is only accessible by float plane, and it has a main lodge that houses the dining room, kitchen, and a nice lounging area. There's also single rooms in the main building, and there's also cabins. The nice thing about being at Igloo Lake Lodge is that from there, you can go out on the lake and fish Igloo Lake. And then from there, you can also access three or four other lakes by boat, and you can fly into many other lakes that are all in the area. I love to stream fish as well. And there are many streams and brooks that go from one lake to the other. And most of them have trout in them at different times of the year. You know, being a forager, even walking here on the trail, I'm spotting some white berries. These are mint berries. See, there's a couple here. There's one there, one there. You know, when there's a lot of them and you find a cluster and they're all ripe, they actually smell the air. They taste like mint, so I'm just gonna pick one off here. Nice uh, breath freshener. You know, it almost reminds you of a Tic Tac. Look how tiny it is. Mm, 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 that tastes good, just like a mint. Beautiful, nice quiet run. 
Come on out of those shadows, we can have a good look at you. Mr. Trout, do you love to fly fish? Can you imagine coming to Labrador and hooking these fish all day long? You can switch from boat fishing to stream fishing like this. The number of lakes that you can explore here besides the big lake, beautiful. Okay, swing them over here, Travis. Well done, beautiful. It's nice that we've got this nice net that we can observe the fish while keeping it in the water. Look at, isn't that a beautiful brook trout? I kind of have inside this. I'm trying to show them off to you while keeping them in the water. Isn't that gorgeous? Brilliant. That fly is just in the edge of its mouth. It should just pop out. Come here. Pop out. It's barbless. There. Beautiful details. Look at the spots on it. If I turn it one way, you can see the colors are almost like a lake trout. Turn it the other way, it's like so iridescent. And these beautiful highlights that they have. I think they're just a nice fish. I'm going to just leave them out of the net. Watch. Is he going to go slower fast? Oh, man. This is beautiful. Woo! Perfection. Closed captioning brought to you by Leguano, natural barefoot technology for every adventure. Such a beautiful stream. Travis, I'm gonna go down and see if I can just land it here. They are so aggressive. You know, look at how small this brook is. Very colorful, but look at the size of the streamer he hit. Yeah, this should just fall out. Come on. There. Look at beautiful little brookie. There he goes. Look at the size. I'm gonna drop this fly in so you can see it. Look how bright it is. Here, look at that. Amazing, eh? How they're attracted to that. This is Labrador tea. Makes sense, right? We're in Labrador. But if you can remember this plant, it is amazing. Look, one side is kind of leathery, this side. The other side is like felt. See, it's like fuzzy on the bottom side. I learned decades ago that when you're in the bush, you can make really nice tea. Usually we get river water and we get like a large tomato can that's empty. Fill it with water, put it over a fire with a coat hanger and let it boil. And then we throw a handful of the Labrador tea in. Brook trout are probably one of the most famous fish to get with a fly. Two reasons, one is because they're so colorful, they're beautiful, but the second one is that they're extremely aggressive. And they'll take topwater flies, dry flies, and uh, flies that look like mice and other small rodents, and they'll also hit subsurface flies. You control for them, but I love to cast for them with a fly rod, especially when you see rising fish or casting to shorelines and points. Yes, there was one right there. See if I can just bring him into the shallows again, Travis. We're gonna save the net. We don't want that net to get too soaked. You can tell these fish are wild because that guy went for it like three times before he actually grabbed it. And he's hooked very lightly. Come here. See if I can do the professional release here. He's gonna flop out of my hands. I'm gonna put my rod rock stone to stone. And my right hand there. He is so beautiful. It's just hooked lightly in the tip right there. Here he goes. Now I want to see something while I'm down here. Travis, do you think if I move a rock, I'm going to find a treasure? Any treasure? What do you think? Let's see what's hiding here. You know, I know passionate fly fishermen would actually be moving the rocks around and seeing exactly what critters are down there. I'm just going to rinse this one off. So you see, there's little things wiggling around. When they're hungry, they'll go right around these rocks and eventually, these critters will hatch. The man to my right is Jim Burton, and his father, Vince Burton, who was also here, he just left a little while ago, established a few lodges in Labrador. And we've got Craig Gillingham, who's the new owner of Igloo Lake Lodge. So Jim, I've got a question for you. Being from Newfoundland, the rock, you've got lots of lakes there and rivers, and you've got salmon and brook trout fishing. How did you and your dad end up in Labrador and starting lodges? Well, we were in Labrador because my, my dad, uh, being an entrepreneur, was a, a partner in uh, Labrador Airways, which oh, okay. was the uh, main airline supplying uh, and adding to the light success of the communities on the Labrador coast. Okay, this is an interesting thing because we started the TV show, Canadian Sport Fishing, back in uh, 1986. And really, catch and release didn't exist. 
Yeah. So I, I don't know if you guys remember that far back. Yeah. It, it, you know, uh, if you were a good fisherman, you had a string or a fish, and you kept and you killed the biggest fish that you caught, whether it was a trout or a pike or whatever. You know, people were re weren't even really taking pictures back then. You know, we have cell phones now. Yeah. It, it was the trophy, right? Yeah. So I remember some lodges in Western Canada, one in Manitoba that started live release fishing, and it was a new thing. We were promoting live release fishing in the show, using a glove to handle the fish carefully and so yes. on. So when you made that step, because I know sometimes, you know, you've got pros and cons. You've got people that come to lodges because they want to take fish home, right? And they want to take a big fish to mount. Yes. And so you're eliminating that, that audience, if yeah. you will. Yeah. But on the other hand, you're going to have a better fishery. So how did you make the decision to go live release and a single barbless hook? Yeah, you know, that's a great question. We, we looked at it long term. So, you know, what's best? Uh, for us and, and, and to promote the, uh, the industry long term. And to us, it was a renewable resource. Yeah. You know, uh, uh, putting the trout back and practicing a quality release, not just a release, but yeah. you know, so uh, educating all our staff on the uh, protocol when it comes to releasing uh, the brookies and the salmon, yeah. uh, and for that matter, the northern pike. So uh, being a renewable resource and looking at the payback, um, we could see huge dividends, uh, you know, within a decade. And uh, yeah, the, the rest is history. I don't know um, if you do any kind of, I'm not gonna say training, but I don't know how you pick your guides. How do you pick the guides here? Because you need people that are, are, are people friendly. They gotta yeah. have, they gotta be good natured and also be intelligent and know about fishing and stuff. All of our guides here, they're, they're very passionate for what they do, very experienced, very knowledgeable, and, and just take their jobs very seriously. If you're looking for a beautiful experience, uh, some big brook trout, some unspoiled lamb, Igloo Lake is, is the place for people to come. You're going to get big brookies, you're going to have a fabulous time, you're going to get treated like royalty from the minute you step off the plane. You're just going to have an amazing week. One day I wandered out on the sea, searching for something that really found me. I didn't know it, but it drew me to it. Soon I was full of its passion in me. I'm Mike Tattle of Vignan. 40 years I've fished the world and have learned it's not just about catching the fish, the size of the fish or the numbers. It's about appreciating every sunrise and sunset, the smell of the sea, savoring the culture and the fish with friends. Here's the catch. It's the total experience. Presented by Bear Reels, versatile, precision, handcrafted hybrid center pins. Seabreeze boats, tame the oceans. Raymarine Electronics. Raymarine, simply superior.